Hello and welcome to Where Living is a Vacation. I'm Joe Johnson and I'm joined by Jimmy Johnson, who is the creator of Where Living is a Vacation on Facebook and Instagram. Yes. Thanks for coming back. Yeah, thanks for writing me back. <laughs> I'm excited about today's episode. Uh, as you probably know, uh, Lake Orion is an amazing treasure trove of history and um, one of the biggest connections we have to uh, history is the Scripps estate and the surrounding property. Um, it's, it's just, there's so much history here. Scripps, William E. Scripps, what an amazing person, comes from uh, a historical family line. Um, his father, he founded the Detroit News, um, James E. Scripps. And uh, so William E. Scripps, who uh, mm -hmm. purchased up property here in 1916 in the surrounding area, right now we're sitting at the Orion Center in Orion Township and all of the surrounding land from Oakland County Parks to Orion Township uh, land uh, was all at one time farmland and it was all purchased by William E. Scripps. Yes. Um, I kind of think to that scene uh, in Back to the Future where Doc Brown says, mm -hmm. there was one time when old man Peabody had farmland all around here and had some crazy idea about uh, <laughs> breeding pines. And that's kind of the same thing here, that yeah. this was all farmland at one time. Um, and so Scripps purchased up all that farmland uh, and uh, created the, the Scripps estate. Yep. And so what he did, well, he went, he didn't have much of an interest in running the newspaper. So uh, that uh, was taken over for the most part. Daily duties were taken over by George Booth, who was his brother-in-law. And William pursued his hobbies, which was yeah. farming and agriculture and uh, aviation. And um, some of the, oh, he acquired 3,800 acres. Think about that. Yeah, that's amazing. 3,800 yeah. acres, including a lot of the structures that had previously existed. One of those structures we're gonna talk about a little bit later is the Hadrill uh, Farmhouse. Mm -hmm. um, there was a James, was it James T. Hadrill, I believe James was his T. name? James T. Hadrill, yeah. Uh, he farmed that land. Uh, and he passed away in 1911 and then Scripps bought up his property. Yeah. And the interesting thing is Scripps retained a lot of those structures and even moved some of them to their current locations. Yeah, yeah, and, and what's interesting is uh, learning that uh, he started WWJ. That's right. News radio, so that was one of his, his babies that were up here. And also, uh, here's a picture of him actually, um, handling the controls at the news radio. That's pretty awesome. So Look yeah, it was, it was a pretty interesting photo and I'm like oh wow that's that's him and you can just see he knows how to operate all that stuff and yeah like you said earlier he didn't have an interest with uh, with the newspaper and want more of a peaceful life mm -hmm. so uh, we're living his vacation the <laughs> vacation land in Lake Orion uh, where he had his mansion and uh, yeah aviation was like another um, interest of his as well now uh, you have an interesting photo bring up that photo yeah. you and I have discussed so uh, on the Scripps estate uh, there was sort of an airfield. And from what I've read, today that airfield is used by a radio uh, RC plane club where they fly their RC planes uh, in the park area there. That airfield was uh, owned uh, by Scripps. And when Amelia Earhart was here in Michigan, uh, he invited her to come out and fly uh, this experimental glider. And I always thought there was such a neat story, but it wasn't until recently where we stumbled onto a photo of Amelia Earhart uh, in the experimental glider. Yeah, Let's take a yeah. look at There's it. There's a photo of it here. It's opening up really small. Bigger, but there she is. That photo was actually taken at the Scripps estate uh, in uh, Scripps experimental glider. Ah, there's How a bigger cool version. is that? Yeah, that that's so cool because uh, along with her, like on the experimental glider, there's pictures of her flying over Lake Orion that you've probably seen, like one that I think was probably photoshopped <laughs> in some sense, bit, yeah. doctored over, over downtown. <laughs> but yeah, like while she was here too, she started a club of aviators. Um, they called it the, uh, the 99 Club, the famous 99 Club. So where some Orient Township residents belong to. Mm. So um, I don't know if there's any like 
any history of like who the members were, but it was right. interesting to see that as well. But this image is like uh, from 1929 mm. uh, on this glider, and yeah, I mean he was he's dead set on having some sort of uh, imprint on aviation, and he did that with his Gliders Inc. company. Uh, just amazing. So in addition yeah. to aviation, uh, he raised Angus cattle on uh, the farmland, sheep. Uh, pigs, pork, chickens, uh, ran a dairy operation, and the property also became a wildlife sanctuary. And I guess he was adamant in, in giving wildlife uh, undisturbed nature uh, to yeah. uh, reside in, which right. is-, is Prized uh, cattle, like the, his Guernsey cattle were like sought after and bred, and mm. so, yeah. Wow, and so a lot of those structures um, that were on the grounds uh, still exist today, and they're part of the Canterbury Village property, which we're going to talk about a mm -hmm. little bit later in the program. Uh, a lot of the managers of the land, uh, the farmland, everything, lived in those colorful uh, houses um, that exist. As a matter of fact, this is a photo that I took when I was on the grounds one winter. Um, the Always Christmas store had been sold and the sun was setting and this image just caught my eye mm -hmm. and I actually shot it on video but when I was looking at the video this this composition I just thought was striking yeah it's amazing so I did photo. a still image <laughs> added a little oil painting filter to it yeah um, but a lot of you who visited Canterbury Village recognize these uh, structures are all businesses now but these were actually homes of the people that worked on the Scripps estate and the surrounding farmland. Yeah, really especially amazing. yeah, especially during like the Great Depression. He mm -hmm. was, you know, kind enough he brought them all in and fed them and kept them here uh, on um, on the grounds right. to take care of everything. And so like I said, uh, in addition to Canterbury Village, uh, Orion Township Civic Center Park, uh, that was part of the grounds. They, mm -hmm. the, the pavilion, the uh, amphitheater that they have over there, they call it the Wildwood Amphitheater. That yep. was named after the Wildwood farmland that Scripps acquired and, yeah. and put together. And that gave name to our film festival, our ONTV <laughs> film festival. It's called the Wildwood Film Festival. Yeah. So if you ever heard that term Wildwood, its roots are here in this yeah. area. And I didn't know, what one thing I didn't know was Scripps Road, the dirt road that is, exists go. today, was literally just a path. Mm. That was for Scripps for his mansion. That is now, you know, the Scripps road that we see today. That's still dirt, the high still, is, still no. a path. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it hasn't evolved much. No, since no. Then. <laughs> um, and then, of course, o Ori our Oakland County's uh, Orion's, uh, Orion Oaks Park, the dog park, yep. and a good chunk of Bald Mountain Recreation Area yeah. all sit on this land that was preserved by Scripps. And there was also like something that I didn't know about Scripps was that he was also into boats, motor boats. And uh, one of the stories that after the Titanic sank uh, in 1912, he wanted to get people back into like, you know, go back. We can still create the perfect boat and cross where we need. Don't worry about it. So uh, he built a boat called the Detroit, which I have a photo here of that, of a young Scripps here. Oh. Wow, look at that. So this is 1912, so you see Captain Thomas Fleming Day, and then there's William Scripps there. And um, yeah, so this is called the Detroit Boat, uh, was the first marine gas engine, the first motorboat to cross the Atlantic. Uh, they said it took 21 days and was called a suicide trip by a New York newspaper. But uh, yeah, this, this planned trip ran from, um, they boated from Detroit all the way to St. Petersburg, Russia. Oh wow! Yeah, I, on that on that, that little boat, little the boat Detroit. You see, like boat. even on the side of the boat, it said Detroit on it. I don't know if they were brave or lucky, but I don't yeah. know how they made that. That's yeah, incredible. it didn't want people to be feared <laughs> by the waters. Speaking of uh, structures on the grounds of, of Canter or Canterbury Village and, and the Scripps Estate, we were just talking a moment ago about a little schoolhouse. Do you want to bring up that image of the schoolhouse? Yeah. Um, apparently, Scripps built a schoolhouse for the children of his workers. And eventually that became uh, a church, yes. right? An Episcopalian church. Yeah. But surprisingly, that structure still stands today. I did not know that. Uh, yeah. Talk about your experience. So this was like a school that was open for a year. It was called the Nina D. Scripps School after his wife, uh, built in 1924. And it was for um, the servants and the workers, the farmers that were on the land, their children to attend school. 
and uh, it was it was a nice find, and like the structure is still there today. It's it's a church, like you said, mm. and um, and I don't know if there's a dedication there, but I, I wonder if there. I have to go visit there and see if there's. A dedication I'll go with there. you. I want to <laughs> see that. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. All right. So that now leads up to ten years after Scripps acquired all this farmland. Uh, him and his family were permanently residing in Detroit, but they wanted a summer location. So what better community to come out to in the summer than the resort community of Orion, Lake Orion, Orion Township. Yep. Uh, so they built a summer home, which is crazy to think mm -hmm. of because it was so ornate and so elaborate. Um, and that's the yeah. building you see behind us, the Scripps Estate. Um, and so it took a year and a half for the, the building to get constructed. Uh, they called it a country retreat. Um, and uh, a few years later, they ended up moving out here permanently. Yep. Um, and so while they were out here, uh, the brother-in-law, or yeah, his, his brother-in-law, Clarence E. Day, he designed the mansion. Um, and uh, it had the most modern amenities at the time, electricity, yeah. plumbing, all this yeah. stuff. Even in the basement, they have like the safe that was in the basement too, oh, that wow. had their silver and wine and all their uh, expensive items, uh, treasures. But uh, there is a tunnel down there from what they're saying, there's a tunnel that leads from that safe and it leads out to the back of the mansion, out into the grounds. Mm. It's kind of like an escape route. Oh, wow. <laughs> in case something ever happened, if there was uh, an attack or something. Interesting, <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah. The mansion itself is 28,000 square feet and has 67 rooms. Now, it's not 67. normally open to the public. Um, occasionally, people are invited to come in for uh, functions and stuff. It was featured in a, a low-budget, um, uh, religious uh, faith-based film um, oh. and uh, so people have had access to it and I was lucky enough in 2016 I think it was the Chamber of Commerce Chamber of Commerce had uh, an event there and I was invited to come and shoot video while I was there I interviewed uh, Lisa Drummond who is uh, with Guest House Incorporated the current owners of the Scripps mansion and surrounding properties um, and she's uh, going to explain in this video clip that we shot a few years ago uh, a little bit about the history of uh, the Scripps Mansion and uh, how it's used today. First of all, throw some numbers at me. When was this house built and how long was it privately owned by the Scripps family? It was built from 1926 to 1927, actually about a year and a half. It's 28,000 square feet. Mm. And the, um, they moved out in 1952 after Mr. Scripps' death. So they moved in in 27. It was originally a summer home. And then in 1930, they moved here full time. Wow. And so then after his death, it became, it fell into private hands or how, what happened after his death? After his death, the, it was originally a 3,800 acre estate. It was subdivided and um, the archdiocese actually purchased part of the land. And then in 1956, Austin Ripley wanted to start a treatment area for Catholic clergy, and he bought the land from the archdiocese, and that's how Guest House got started. So they've been using that for that purpose, using this house for that purpose for quite a long time. Yes. This is our 60th anniversary, yes. Oh, wow. That's yeah, amazing. in fact, we opened our doors May 20th, 1956. And uh, I don't know if a lot of people are aware of the fact that Canterbury Village used to be part of this estate and that was some of the property that was partitioned off. Yes, some of the barns over there are from the original and the, the f I think it's four little shops at the back, little houses, that's part of the original property. Most of Lake Orion was part of the original property. How often or, or how long has this particular house been open to the public for events like today? Actually, we're just opening it back up. Um, we were open in 2008, 2009, 2010 for events, and then we shut down for a while, and because we do use this room, or this, I'm sorry, this house for treatment. And then um, we're now opening it up a little bit at a time for events. That's awesome. What are the reactions when you see people come in here? I mean, it's it's just <laughs> beautiful, overwhelming, isn't it? They're, they're just amazed. I mean, it's a beautiful home. It's a special, special place. And a lot of people, even in the Lake Orion area, are, have never been here. So now that they're able to come in and see it, it's very, very nice. 
Now, I overheard you say earlier that even though the house looks like it's been here forever, that there were some modern conveniences you want to talk about? Yes, there bit? are. Actually, the infrastructure for the house is concrete and steel. So we have 12 inch thick walls, and then all of the facings have been put over that to give it the look of an older home. Um, the kitchen, all the appliances are commercial grade, so we actually can um, do some catering out of the kitchen. We have an elevator, which would have been high tech. For 1926 and actually electricity would have been pretty high-tech for 1926 and indoor plumbing and we're so happy for the indoor plumbing <laughs> <laughs> so they were ahead of the curve right when they built this building they were and that was sort of the um, theory for people building houses like this and like Meadowbrook that you replicated an older home but you brought in new technologies to bring it up to date and make it comfortable Oh, oh, I'm just uh, <laughs> so grateful that I was able to yeah. to get in there and uh, see that place from the inside. It was just remarkable and yeah. and like like I said, kind of eerie. You can almost feel like it's ghostly stepping, presence there. It's like stepping back in time. Yeah, yeah. like y you know, he was there. Nina, the children were all in that house, that huge mansion. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's and uh, yeah. Well, like with with Nina, I didn't know that. Um, so. Nina, uh, his mom and dad, used to vacation up here before she was even involved with William Scripps. So they would have vacations up here where mm. Living's Vacation, they had their vacation home up here. Wow. But uh, they've known each other since they were kids. Wow. Just like uh, they went to the same church together, which the church was built by his dad in Detroit. So that's how they met. Um, Nina Downey is her main name. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was, uh, it was great to get that backstory of how they met and then ended up they liked where they vacationed and they built that grand summer home here. <laughs> <laughs> That's incredible. In that last shot that you saw, I was shooting out of the upstairs window over the grounds. Uh, the mansion is one thing, but the, the estate and the grounds is, is pretty incredible too. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, here on my laptop here, uh, if you Google the Scripps Mansion and Estate, you get these amazing aerial shots here uh, of the grounds and the estate. Um, and it's just stunning, just so ornate. Um, yeah. The story goes that while the mansion was under construction, American estate designer Bryant Fleming designed the garden, complete with walls and walkways and fountains and more. Um, and 80 years later, the, the layout of the garden and its features are relatively unchanged, unchanged which is um, pretty amazing. Um, so, yeah. yeah. So, uh, William Scripps, he passed away in uh, 1952. The land was subdivided. Um, a large part of his collection of European paintings were yep. donated to the DIA. I yeah. wonder if they have those on display. Yeah, I wonder. That would be great. And yeah. like for him, to pass away from something that can be simply handled today. Well, what I, was the I heard cause it was of appendicitis. It? Oh, really? So, wow. could have had his appendix taken out, but you know, at that time, it was. Um, wow. Did not know that, I guess. Wow. <laughs> so, in 1956, uh, Guest House Incorporated became the owner of the mansion, uh, and a little over a hundred acres of the property. Uh, Guest House treats alcohol addiction for members of the clergy and the mansion became sort of a relaxation getaway for those who were uh, yeah. trying to recover. Uh, today I read that the facility tr primarily treats women uh, mm -hmm. recovering from addiction. Um, yeah. So uh, they weren't allowing visitors for a long time. Eventually, they, like I said, they would host events that would allow people in, but not allowing visitors led to all kinds of rumors of, of uh, angry monks that would chase teenagers off the property and yeah. and ghost stories and things like that. Yeah, so what did you hear as far as ghost stories go? Yeah, it's like one of those history rabbit holes where you, <laughs> you find one artifact or a factoid and you're like, oh wow, okay, <laughs> ghost. So yeah, Scripps Road, they've talked about uh, Minnie who was the, the cook uh, slash servant for them. Uh, there's rumors of her being uh, around the area, around the grounds, as well as Nina, um, and um, and some of the other farm workers as well, and and I, I think we'll go into more later about like hadrills and about yeah. Canterbury, and good. maybe we know the reason why that <laughs> happened. Exactly. <laughs> I want to play. Uh, I found some really great uh, drone footage uh, of the estate. 
um, and we'll sort of talk over it. But um, yeah. yeah, the grounds are just spectacular, and uh, yeah, it was added amazing. to the National Register of Historic Places in 2007. Mm. Um, but yeah, like you, as I was researching information for this on YouTube, I found several videos of people chasing ghosts on Scripps Road. There are yeah. stories of cloaked figures on the road of, on Scripps Road. Chasing and, vehicles down and yeah, yeah, so at it's night. Sort of a, this is a hot yeah. spot for, for yeah. ghost chasers. It's really yeah. amazing. And Scripps Road, I mean, at night, is it's pretty dark. So <laughs> if you, I wouldn't blame them. I'd be scared going down that road late at night as well. <laughs> yeah. All right, so that sort of wraps up our look at the Scripps Estate and the Scripps Mansion. Uh, we're going to take a little break, and when we come back, uh, we're going to focus on Canterbury Village, which inherited a lot of the grounds and buildings and structures uh, from the Scripps Estate. So we'll be right back with more after this. OAN TV invites you to take part in our 10-week video production class. The class meets on Monday nights from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. and offers instruction on studio production, field production, and non-linear editing. Upon completion of the class, you get access to OAN TV's facilities and equipment to produce your own program or short film. The cost is $30 for Lake Orion residents, $60 for non-residents. For more information, give OAN TV a call at 248-393-1060 or visit orionontv.org today. And welcome back, and I'm joined by Jimmy Johnson. I'm Joe Johnson. Jimmy's the creator of Where Living is a Vacation on social media, Facebook and Instagram. And we are talking about the Scripps Estate and the history of this land that surrounds where we're sitting right now at the Orion Center at uh, Joslin near Clarkston Road. Um, yeah. And knowing the history of the Scripps Estate and, and the surrounding land, uh, you would think that uh, the you drive along what's called Kings Court Castle Restaurant mm -hmm. on Joslin Road, and you would think, oh gosh, that's had to have been here forever. Yeah. It's not, it's relatively new. Um, that was put there by Stan Aldrich. And Stan Aldrich came into possession of uh, what's now known as Canterbury Village uh, in, I think it was 1991. Um, and his goal was to create a Frankenmuth, uh, sort of an right. up north getaway where you can uh, eat chicken and, uh, and have all these events and activities. And unfortunately, you'll, you'll, you'll hear uh, Stan's son Keith mention this a little bit, but uh, Great Lakes Crossing put the kibosh on that. When they built Great Lakes Crossing, um, yeah. the foot traffic at Canterbury Village just about dried up. And, uh, and it took a long time to sort of recover from that. Right. Right. And uh, yeah. what was the, what did you say the original intent was of the the Canterbury Village grounds? Yeah, so in in the late '60s, so in '67 actually, um, there was a they say a high powered businessman Howard Keating Jr. who purchased Wildwood Farm, and so what it was meant to be he had plans to create like a, a Keatington antique village, so it would have its own town all built in. Mm -hmm. So stores, shops, post office, all these office buildings, all within this area. But uh, it was at that time it was the single largest parcel out there for purchase. Mm. But uh, something happened. I don't know why it did not end up being developed. But gladly, you know, we were able to preserve what was there on Wildwood Farms. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Now uh, owning Canterbury Village today is is uh, Keith Aldrich, the son of Stan Aldrich. And we're grateful to Keith. He, he sponsored our ONTV food drive earlier this year. We're really grateful for that. And I had a chance to interview him and asked him to give us a brief history of Canterbury Village. Uh, so let's take a look at that video now. history. My father bought uh, the property in 1991. Uh, it took him about two years to restore the property and, and open it up basically as a Christmas village and a giant Christmas store which was the anchor of the business um, for a long long time. Uh, fast forward 
to 2020, I bought the property for my mom and dad, me and my wife, Angie. And in the last 15 months, we've kind of had the quite the whirlwind of change uh, with Canterbury. We are no longer in the retail business, meaning the Christmas. Uh, I've leased out every square foot of this place to great uh, local vendors, Yates, Wooden Tulip, Scott's Farm, you name it. We have some really, really great small vendors here. And then uh, we've, we've gotten known for our family events uh, that we, uh, we do with our programming. Uh, dinosaurs, Halloween, holiday, food truck rallies, things of that nature. And our calendar for 2022 is by far our biggest ever and it's going to be a crazy summer here. Uh, just go to our Facebook site. I mean, we got everything on there. Uh, our, our social media team does a great job of keeping people up to speed on what Canterbury is doing. So just go to Facebook, Canterbury Village, and then obviously you can go to CanterburyVillage.com on the web, but that'll take you to Facebook as well. I, I own Dino Stroll, um, and uh, we, we've been around the country. Last June was our first uh, uh, first road show in Philadelphia, and so we've been at it for about seven months now. And last weekend we were in St. Louis. This weekend we're in Chantilly, and uh, been all over the country. And it's been a whirlwind. So I never thought I'd be in the uh, dinosaur carnival business, but I am. And uh, I've had a lot of fun and me and my wife have had a great uh, 15 months and our charity and giving has been awesome and we're, we're very lucky and very happy. It's amazing to me as I watch it, I'm getting yeah. a little nostalgic because video that I shot is now considered historic and yeah. always Christmas, <laughs> which like I said, Stan Aldrich wanted to create a Frankenmuth and what's famous at Frankenmuth? Bronner's, the yeah. always Christmas store at yep. Frankenmuth, and so he wanted something similar here in Orion Township, and it was successful for a while, and I enjoyed visiting, but like right. I said, um, uh, the uh, Great Lakes Crossing uh, Mall just sort of killed yeah. this retail. Um, I have some video here. You saw a little bit of it during uh, Keith's interview, but uh, this is when uh, Canterbury, or when Always Christmas still existed at Canterbury Village. Uh, yeah. This building has since been sold off to Woodside. It is now this monumental, yeah. spectacular church. Um, yeah. But uh, at uh, at the time, it was always Christmas, and it was multiple floors of decorations yeah. and ornaments. And you mentioned toys. Oh yeah, they had like custom-made toys. They had a lot of like the uh, the older wooden toys. And uh, I remember as a child walking up those steps and. They had this uh, life-size statue of a, a Hulk Hogan, a <laughs> WWF or WWE Hulk Hogan. So I wonder that where was, that is today. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, but uh, that was always something I looked forward to as a kid. It was, it reminded me of Frank and Muth of uh, Bronner's. Yeah, and so yeah. here's uh, this was 2012 Santa leading all the kids into Always yeah. Christmas, and uh, I always got a kick of just going mm -hmm. in there and wandering around and, and checking out all the displays. I mean, look at that. Yeah. It's just incredible, and that was year-round. You can go in, and if, mm -hmm. you're, a, if you're a Christmas uh, aficionado, uh, Always Christmas was for you to go in there. Look at those. They had the animatronics and these incredible structures. Yeah. And, uh, especially when the holidays would roll around, they would, they would go all out. Um, but it was a pretty, pretty magical place. But mm -hmm. once, uh, once business started drying up a little bit, um, Keith was forced to uh, sell that structure off. So it was sold to Woodside Bible Church. They went in, did some uh, renovations, modifications, and mm -hmm. now it's a, a very popular, active church that's active in the community. Yeah. Um, but at one time, it was your, it was your Christmas destination. Yeah, and our family still frequents uh, Canterbury Village. There's just so many activities during the year that we can attend, especially at the car shows. So, yeah, yeah and that. and um, Keith, uh, he's really since he's taken over ownership of of Canterbury Village, he's he's just every weekend he have some event, Taco Fest, yeah. food truck fest, you yeah. name it. Um, there's just events there pretty much every weekend, and it just draws people in from all over. So Canterbury Village yeah. is as popular as ever. Yeah, because like growing up, I only knew what I knew, what I see there uh, at Canterbury. I'm like, oh, that must have been there forever. But uh, <laughs> I end up finding an old photo from 1926 of uh, Wildwood Farm, Canterbury oh, Village. Yeah. Uh, if you could bring this up. And 
what he has here is Scripps Wildwood Farm, a hobby is the open sesame to happiness. <laughs> so I love that, and Wildwood Farm is my hobby. So I mean, that's <laughs> you know that's definitely William Scripps because he liked being up north. He liked to be yeah. away from the city. So yeah. this was his perfect sanctuary. <laughs> it's so great that uh, those structures have been preserved and now yeah. occupy uh, you know retail space and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, being to incorporate yeah. history into uh, new stores is is great, and it just shows how unique it is. And well, yeah. speaking of history, let's um let's get into one particular historic structure that still sits on the ground. So let's take a look at this. Uh, this is known as the Hadrill Farmhouse. And as I mentioned earlier, this predates um, the Scripps estate. Uh, Hadrill, James T. Hadrill, farmed this land long before uh, Scripps ever made his way out here. Yep. Uh, he passed away in 1911. Um, Scripps yeah. purchased the property in 1916. So yeah. and he was a hunter. Oh, he was okay. uh, he was a big time hunter. He he, oh, wow. uh, he killed bears, deer. Um, he fished everywhere. So he was an avid outdoor outdoorsman. <laughs> wow! And as you can see from the video here, it is now a salon, the Revival Salon, and I covered yeah. their grand opening and and um, and they were also a sponsor of our food drive a number of years yeah. ago. And they tried to maintain as much of the charm of this structure as possible. And talking to the owner off camera, mm -hmm. they mentioned their their ghostly encounters uh, in in that structure. And mm -hmm. uh, doing some research, we found out that in this one article that I read that you could tell by the the wording of the article was written some time ago, yeah. And it, they were I, they must have been commemorating his death or something. And mm -hmm. they talked about how when he when he uh, started farming that land, Native Americans still occupied yeah. land around here. They were the still around it, yeah. yeah. And uh, one thing that caught my eye because it was just glossed over in this article that I read is that as Hadro was plowing his farmland, he dug up. Native American burial grounds and yeah. churned up bones and artifacts. Flint arrows, yeah, <laughs> quite, a, yeah, quite a collection of Indian artifacts. So, so I wonder what happened to that. I, I wonder how the local Native Americans mm. reacted to that. Well, I think we've watched enough movies to know what happens when <laughs> you and that too many Indian burial grounds. Might explain <laughs> some of this ghostly yeah. activity that we've been hearing about. But yeah. uh, that kind of shocked me that uh, he just plowed right through those burial grounds and. I'm yeah. curious where all those artifacts are today. Same here, same here. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, besides him being a farmer, you know, he was he was also the treasurer uh, of Orion Township as well, um, two different times. So wow. he's he's you know one of the originals here. And uh, yeah, I, I am curious to where all those artifacts are if yeah. they ever turn up anywhere. <laughs> oh, fascinating. But yeah, I've heard like stories about the cellar, you're knocking on the cellar on the back of that house yeah. and people being accidentally trapped down there, oh, accidentally wow. trapped down there. So <laughs> oh, yeah, lots of like scary stories that come out of there. <laughs> we'll have to do a special episode when Halloween rolls around, talk about yeah. local ghost stories. That'd be fun. Definitely. <laughs> now, a little while ago, I mentioned that not all of the structures on the grounds of Canterbury Village are historic. Uh, I s mentioned that Kings Court Castle Restaurant is relatively new. Um, it, uh, I, it's, if we go to this video here, you'll see that it was still under construction in 1994. And the goal of Stan Aldrich, who you'll see in this video in a second, uh, was to create a Bronner's, or not a Bronner's, uh, more of a chicken yeah, like uh, Bavaria buffet thing, thing yeah. like you would have at Frankenmuth. Now you see some of these suits of armor and stuff. There's the restaurant. There's yeah. what the restaurant looked like at one time. It is now mostly banquet space. Yep. Um, but here's some really interesting uh, tidbits. So it opened to the public in 1996, includes oak paneling. Oh, there's, there's Stan there. Mm. It includes oak paneling and carvings from France, armor from Europe, tapestries and an antique stained glass window from Scotland. Uh, chandelier was originally in the Michigan theater around 1924. And if I read the article correctly, it was shipped overseas for a while and then returned 
back oh, to wow. King's Court Castle restaurant. Wow, um, so the contents of King's Court Castle are historic. The structure itself is relatively new, but we're yeah. so used to seeing that driving up and down Johnson Road mm -hmm. that you just sort of assume that it's always been part of that campus. Yeah, growing up here, that's that was my um, impression was that's always been there. <laughs> so yeah. they did a really good uh, job on the detail to make it look like a building from the past. Yeah. And so uh, Canterbury Village has become an amazing uh, tourist destination that brings people here to Lake Orion and Orion Township. And um, it's, it's great to see it thriving and bustling again yeah. uh, with lots of foot traffic and activities and events. Um, you saw the, uh, the dino stroll. Uh, Keith mentioned that it, it, they own it. The Keith Aldrich oh, okay. owns dino stroll. And they launched it uh, here uh, in Lake Orion uh, last year, but then it tours the country. It goes out to locations across the country. And if you drive past it right now, you're gonna see a big T-Rex at the entrance. Yeah. Uh, it's coming <laughs> back to Canterbury Village for a little bit of a stay before it goes on the road again. But yeah. uh, I visited it last year when they opened it up and it is spectacular. Did you get a chance to see Dino Stroll? I didn't see Dino Stroll, but I did see the Jaguars. So oh. there was a, a car show of Jaguars. And All right. my kids are into vehicles. So it was like the biggest collection of Jaguars I've seen. Vehicles from wow. the early editions to the latest. But uh, it has a nice backdrop. That it with sure all does. with the uh, the historic buildings gives a nice backdrop to uh, historic vehicles like that. Yeah, and they uh, I have some video here since you brought it up okay. of uh, the Corvette Fest. So oh, yeah. the uh, what do they call it? The GMC Corvette Club mm -hmm. or something like that. Yeah. Uh, every year this has become an annual tradition now. Uh, there's Corvettes as far as the eye can see on the grounds of Canterbury Village and um, the last couple of years I think it's been it's been held on a holiday weekend I'm trying to remember which holiday weekend it is now mm -hmm. either Memorial Day weekend or Labor mm -hmm. Day weekend I'm not sure um, but it's every Corvette from its inception to modern day Corvettes and they're all over the grounds and it's just really remarkable to see yeah. Um, one time when I was driving by, I saw a sign that said, a Fiero show. Yes. And so I turned <laughs> in and they had a Pontiac Fiero show. And yeah. I, I'm like, really? Of all cars, a Fiero fest, huh? Apparently, <laughs> Fieros have a following. And so yep. they have a show at Canterbury Village. And uh, so it's really great seeing those things yeah. there. So. And also, you know, having, you know, Yates Cider Mill there, too, is always great. Yeah, and, and I and neglected cider. to mention, <laughs> Sea Pub has great food, um, yep. Yates, and even, believe it or not, uh, Always Christmas does still exist in a smaller form in one of the buildings on the grounds. So oh, okay. there's still a lot to see and do on the grounds of Canterbury Village. Yes, I think William Scripps would be happy with how it is now and keeping the structures and exactly history intact and we owe a debt of gratitude to William Scripps for uh, yeah. maintaining uh, the, the, all the natural surroundings and that have become parkland here in yeah. in this area and we're so lucky that it's all been preserved always have a reminder every day after watching the news Channel 7 news at the very end the Scripps Howard broadcasting like Scripps. There's always a tie. There's always a tie in Lake Orion. Yeah. Speaking <laughs> of which, you know, we mentioned that he founded the radio station, but I did not know, and I'm not sure what his connection was, but it was the Detroit News also started WWJ TV, which is oh. not to be confused with today's WWJ TV. W, uh, the Scripps WWJ TV is now WDIV Channel 4. So, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, hmm. so there's a connection to there television. You know. <laughs> so. All right, I think yeah. that covers the Scripps estate. Any final thoughts? Gee, I'd, if we were to do this in October around uh, Halloween, I think we have a whole episode just on ghosts. That's right. <laughs> we're going to have to revisit it come <laughs> October. Uh, Jimmy, as always, it was great talking history with you. I'm uh, such a big history buff, and Lake Orion has so much to offer. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is just scratching the surface of what is out here. <laughs> That's right. And thank you for watching. I'm Joe Johnson. He's Jimmy Johnson. And we will see you on the next episode of Where Living is a Vacation. Good night.